party hats. Boom, boom. The whole go bang bang here. Let us begin. I want you to keep an eye out for the Boogity Man. Hey everybody, welcome to this week's episode of VHS Bandits. This week we watched Bounty Tracker. Let's pop in the tape. In the city of Los Angeles. A team of assassins is led by a wanted man. This is Ben. But when the police want someone they can't find... The man is practically invisible. There's only one man for the job. I hunt men for a living, Ralston. <laughs> and while the law won't allow policemen to kill... My number one priority is to put Luis Terrez in the way. One man makes it his business. And business... How much am I worth? Hundred grand? Dead or alive. ...is good. Lorenzo Lamas of The Swordsman, Snake Eater, and the hit series Renegade. Matias Hughes from Mission of Justice, Star Trek VI, and Kickboxer 2. And Cindy Pass from Mission of Justice. Bounty Tracker from the producer of Mission of Justice. And now, our feature presentation. Hey everybody, welcome again to this week's episode of VHS Bandits. I'm one of your co-hosts, the Kevbot. Here with me are my homies. I'm one of your co-host homies, Dane Train. And I'm a little homie that you get out of a vending machine at the movie theater, (laughs) Topher Hansen. What's happening, homies? Hey. You know, just getting in trouble, seeing... Tony the homie getting out of trouble, building a youth center, uh, you know, for obligatory reasons. A youth center, which cool. just seems like it's just a house. It doesn't seem like a youth center at all. No, they're definitely not going to build a youth center with that $100,000. Mm, no, no. They are going to buy skateboards and drugs and <clears throat> women. Well, it's, it's funny because, I mean, they obviously... The, the people at the youth center already had shotguns and, and stuff. Yeah, they're so. still gangbangers. Yeah, they're not yeah. doing anything to turn their lives around. <laughs> no. If any, if anything, it was more of a future plan for. Uh, <laughs> they're like, you yeah, know, what? we can yeah. we can get into it when we talk about the movie. Oh yeah, sure. As, sure, as sure. we talk through the movie, yeah, uh, yeah. So Bounty Track, uh, starring Lorenzo Lamas and oh, Mateus yeah. Hughes. Uh, by the way, everybody, this is a new release according to my box. Nice, gooey, wow. scratched up <laughs> yellow, uh, pointy <clears throat> new release sticker, which looks like it used to have another sticker on top of it at one time. Where it's a newer yeah. release. And it's got a nice number five sticker up there, too. Don't know what that stands for, but number five. Number five. Um, Fun fact about this movie. I tried watching it with my wife. <laughs> She did not last five minutes. What? Did she that even? First five uh, minutes is great. Did she, she even? So are we talking like? Does that include the like the three or four trailers at the beginning? Oh, well, we tried to watch it on uh, the Roku channel. Oh, mm, I see. You can you can watch it for free on the Roku channel? Oh, okay. Oh, All right. go do that, people. <laughs> if you don't have and a then, VHS, and then uh, we started to watch it. We started to watch the incredibly long credits sequence at the beginning. All these movies then, have incredibly yeah. long credits. It's a it's they a do. given. Then we got through the first just about the first scene in the bar and my wife was like, "Nope, we're watching something else." Why? That like, scene was fucking cool as yeah. hell. She she had enough. She had enough. It barely got started. Yeah. I thought that scene was mm-hmm. great. I was on the edge of my toilet. Hey, I'm just letting you know. This is <laughs> this is the cold hard facts of Mrs. Bot. Oh, oh man. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. Jeez. I well. wonder why she didn't like it. She didn't give any reasoning. Oh, she was 
She was she went in with low expectations, and apparently this was <laughs> it didn't, didn't even meet, meet that. that. Oh no! <laughs> but it's in Boston. It's in fucking Boston, kid. Yeah, mm. I was like, whoa, and that because I didn't even like. I know that uh, you know Dane Train. You sent us the you're like, hey, do you want to watch these movies this yeah this month? And I was like, yeah. sure. I bear. I just look at the titles. I didn't yeah. really. And then when Lorenzo Lamas walks in the door, I'm like, oh shit, I didn't even know this is a Lorenzo Lamas movie. <laughs> yeah, he's like, right yeah, on the, this is going to be awesome. He's right on the cover. <laughs> I know, but like through the picture on the, like I didn't really recognize who, you know, well, he's just like a text message. I was like, okay. And, you know, at first glance, when you first see him, you don't even really know that it's Lorenzo Lamas. He's, he's no, some he's nerdy nerd. Harvard graduate, you know? <laughs> and he's then, in disguise. And then later, Mateus Hughes pops up, and I'm like, oh, shit, Mateus yeah, Hughes right. versus Lorenzo Lamas. This is going to be awesome. You know, honestly, I wish he was the dopey, dirty Harvard guy the entire movie. That's That was like the best <laughs> acting that, that Lorenzo Lamas has ever done. It was awesome. It was pretty uh, Snake Eater-esque at the oh, very beginning. It definitely. stopped being Snake Eatery, but yeah. at the yeah. beginning it was pretty Snake Eater. It's no Snake Eater 3. <laughs> but uh, It's no Snake Eater 1 through 3. But. I know. Oh, well, I get. Yeah. Okay. All right. Even though I'm not crazy about the first one, but I, I know in terms of like the act, you know, the actual character of Soldier from Snake Eater. Yeah. So, mm-hmm. yeah, 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 yeah. Um, well, Dane, I interrupted you. Why don't you read the box? Sure, sure. All right. So uh, the box says, Triple Black Belt Lorenzo <laughs> Lamas of the Swordsman and Snake Eater. Stars as Johnny Damone, a bounty hunter in hot pursuit of not a paid... Johnny Ramon. Not Johnny Ramon. Uh, a bounty hunter in hot pursuit of a paid assassin in this high voltage collision of martial arts masters. Damone, a lone wolf who specializes in tracking down wanted criminals with the highest prices on their heads, is horrified to discover that his brother has been murdered to silence his testimony in a major mafia trial. And when he learns that professional hitman Eric Gauss, Mateus Hughes of Mission of Justice, Kickboxer 2, was responsible for the killing. Johnny plunges into the violent underworld of killers for hire to hunt down his man. <clears throat> now, every move he makes draws him deeper into his personal vendetta and closer to an explosive martial arts showdown that will rivet action fans to their seats. <laughs> rivet you to your I was, seat. I was wondering how they were going to use the word rivet. I was like, what do you, what do you mean? You're well, hey, rivet. you know, when you got to describe an action movie, you got to say it's explosive and it'll rivet you to your seat. <laughs> I mean, I know riveting, but the, the verb rivet to rivet. Oh yeah. Uh, that so means you rivet, 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 rivet. That's from the critic. So, um, so Kev, I'm curious. When you were watching this with with Mrs. Kev Bot, and she was yes. like, "I don't want to watch this. I want to watch something else." Did you say you could go watch something else somewhere else in the house? <laughs> oh, I'm sitting down and watching <laughs> Pony Tracker. <laughs> or were you like, All "I think right. I know the answer to this." So question. then you guys put on like. Yeah, what did you watch? You know, uh, British we Baking. The, the British Baking Show. I, 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 see, nah, I knew it. That's not cool. Did so, anyone in the British Baking <laughs> Show get bolts jattered through their brains? No. Did no. anyone kick someone in the face on the British Baking Show? No. Were you riveted to your seat be- by the explosive <laughs> conclusion of the British Baking <laughs> Championship? Uh, it. It gets pretty exciting in the tent. Yeah. (laughs) So I'm curious. So I assume you later on had to watch the movie by yourself. Is that right? Yes, I did. All right. I went back and watched the file. um, (laughs) Oh, so you did watch the version that we had. So I could see. So I watched the trailers, which the trailers were. 
Yeah, I don't great. remember what they were. Fucking one awesome. Great. <laughs> one was about a, a Uja board. Yeah. Which one was about Uja board uh, too? Well, they were like no, horror movies three, that were on this tape. One was, was about it Uja mirror. And yeah, that was um, the Amityville the cursor, the, the Amityville, Amityville pis- family reunion. Oh, no, yeah. Amityville, the next generation. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Family, Amityville, and then they had Amityville, Amityville Boys. family values tour. <laughs> they had Witchboard too. Yeah, <laughs> dude, that would be great. Amityville uh, in space, like they make the house into a spaceship and like send it off. Yeah, and then That'd be the great. astronauts go all crazy. Wow, haunted house in space. I mean, that's Event Horizon, oh, make, right? I, mean. I guess so, yeah. Yeah. Um, and then the third one was about, oh, Marshall Outlaw. Oh, yeah, dude, that looks That's a awesome. great name. That looks that fucking looks, cool yeah. as hell. Yeah, well, that had, um... That looks weird. That, that also had the other Mateus <clears throat> Hughes movie uh, that uh, T-Man and I watched called Mission of Justice. Remember that one? Um, Not off the top oh, of my we, head. We watched I'm it sure years and years it. ago at your house. <laughs> But it's it's got um, this other guy who's also a big action. I don't know why I can't remember his name. But yeah, Mateus Hughes was the bad guy in that one too. But um, yeah, yeah. So that's that. I totally forgot to mention on the cover you got uh, like these profile shots: one of Mateus Hughes, one of um, Lorenzo Lamas, and then there's a shot of Lorenzo Lamas kicking his ass, kicking his face to be kicking more his face. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> and it says. When someone has to pay, <clears throat> only one man can collect. All right. right. And then he gives it to a youth center that doesn't exist. That's right. <laughs> the gangbanger youth center. So there's, there's a couple different things going on in this movie, and I'm going to be 100% clear about one thing. Okay, be straight with us. Um, I found it very hard to understand The actual main storyline of this movie. I didn't think that. Yeah. Now that you read the box, I didn't think that happened. (laughs) Yeah. Right. Yeah. I completely agree. Like he was a witness in a trial. I didn't think so. Yeah. When did the fuck they talk about that? Now, correct me if I'm wrong. Very briefly mentioned in the beginning. Oh, it's like towards the beginning of the movie. So, so remind me if I'm wrong. So my thought is there's some company with two partners. One person is doing some some bad stuff. The other yeah, person. Yeah, let's all give what we thought the movie's plot was. Yeah. We haven't done this in a while. So one guy doesn't know that the other guy's doing bad stuff. And then Mateus Hughes and his goons show up with <laughs> guns that have like really weird sound effects. But then later I, I realized. I love they the sound effects well, of these like, guns. Badoo, they were badoo, so badoo, fake. Badoo, but, badoo. but like. They were the, like. Yeah. But then I realized later, oh, wait, no, they had silencers on the guns because they made a big yeah. deal about it later. So I was like, okay. But they sound nothing like what a silent, like they were louder. Well, yeah. Yeah. They sounded <laughs> they <were> just really <laughs> weird. <laughs> and I was they like, sound, really they sounded like if you were shooting like uh, pellet guns at yeah. pieces of plywood yeah. or something. Yeah. Or, or it sounds like if you go to Home Depot and you pick up some PVC pipe and you're like, pretend it's a blow dart gun yeah. or something. Go, <laughs> 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 Yeah, yeah. So yeah. they were just blowing darts out of PVC pipes. It's really weird. Um, but so, they sounded substantial. They, well, they well, so well yeah. Heavy. They and then the squibs go off, and all those innocent people. <laughs> it's like, whoa, dude! They kill like sixteen people. They, in yeah, that yeah. First scene, second scene. Um. So, uh, uh. Yeah. So one guy's doing. Yeah. So so there's a shootout like at this company, I, which I don't know what they do. Are they steal a couple of floppy <laughs> they disks. Do, they're a business company. Dean. Yeah. Come on. And then they uh, do business. One person, I think was. Or one person is Lorenzo Lama's brother. Now Lorenzo Lama's brother yeah. is in Boston, which probably was no, not. He's shot in Los there. Angeles. Lorenzo no, 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 Lamas no, no. is sorry. in Boston. Lorenzo, yeah. So so Lorenzo Lamas is in Boston, and he's 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 catching a bad guy. And this this scene reminded me a lot of Dead or Alive. Dude, for some me reason. too. Like big time Dead or Alive vibes. Go down, go down. <laughs> if anybody out there has not seen that movie yet, I don't know what you're doing with your life. You gotta, you gotta <laughs> see it. T man, you gotta. If you get a chance, if you if you have the tape handy, yeah, you gotta digitize that tape, and we gotta we gotta send that out to our fans. Okay, I would imagine that tape is like pretty 
unobtainium these days. So I'll forget to do that, but I'll yeah. try not to. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so then somebody hired Mateus. Oh no, there's some guy who's in jail who hires Mateus Hugh, Hughes and his goons to go shoot up uh Lorenzo Lama's brother and then some other guy who's like in protective custody <laughs> and other people. And yeah, that's the movie. And they want diamonds. Yeah, yeah, diamonds. Is it did I get that right? <laughs> Uncut diamonds. That sounds kind of right. I mean the Matthias Hughes team kills <clears throat> um Lorenzo Lamas's brother and his pregnant wife the the brother's wife not right. lorenzo lamas's wife um so then he's just out he's out for vengeance yeah and hundred thousand dollars <laughs> it's not about the money but the money helps uh, yeah but yeah i guess that's which why. he he took the trip thanks to his collecting his bounties oh yeah the mm. bounty in the first scene where he fought two dudes in a bar and just handcuffed one of them. And it's interesting that he's a bounty tracker, but not a bounty hunter. Yeah. Well, because bounty hunter was already taken, I assume. <laughs> and that's another seems, thing I seems wanted like to Seems like a pretty out. universal word that yeah. they could use. But in the movie, everybody calls him a bounty tracker yeah. as if it's like a normal thing to say. Yeah. Like the cops, when he comes up, to, <coughs> when he like gets that first guy... He's like the cop comes up and he goes, ah, geez, there's, there's, uh, there's, uh, Lorenzo Lamas, Boston's greatest bounty tracker. Hey, everybody, the bounty tracker of the century is here. How much is this one? $25,000. All right. Enough to get me to LA. Ha, 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 ha. And to pay off Plot. his car. Yeah. Everybody says bounty tracker. Yeah. It doesn't, I've never heard that word until. Yeah. You showed us the cover of this movie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot this word. I didn't hear of this word until we saw the uh, cover for the movie, then promptly forgot the word and then watched the movie. <laughs> <was> like, what? <laughs> Dog the bounty tracker. Uh, but yeah, that's that. That's that the seems the about movie, right. That seems about right for the plot, though. <clears throat> All right. All right. From from my understanding, it's mostly it's like, mostly um, Lorenzo Lamas um, hunting down Mateus Hughes' team, just trying to figure out like what's going on. Yeah, yeah, it kind of plays out like a CSI show or something, like where there's it starts off with a bunch of like cool action shit, and then it's like him going to different places, asking around. You yeah. know, for information and shit like that. And then finally kicking some more ass. You know, a convict from Pee Wee's Big Adventure yeah. who's in a wheelchair yeah. now. Yeah, he, I was trying to this, place that guy. Yep. He got in a wheelchair because he cut off one of those do not remove labels off of a mattress. <laughs> <laughs> so the cops broke his spine. Yeah. So that's the kind of the funny thing about this movie is like, so... There is this one little insignificant part where he just meets this guy who's Mickey from Pee Wee's Big Adventure, who's in a wheelchair, who knows Mateus Hughes from way back. Mateus Hughes I, broke his back, put him in a wheelchair permanently, right? Because he wanted out. Because and, Mickey, yeah, wanted out. This is just like, tip in most movies, this is one of those things where like they just go there and interrogate him, and that's it. Usually you wouldn't see this guy ever again. Well, Near like the very end of the movie, or like the last quarter of the movie, suddenly they're like, "Oh, we're gonna go back to the guy in the wheelchair's house." And Mateus Hughes kills him, and we meet this character once, real quick, who's Mateus Hughes, um, like his uh, uh, there's like a kid who he takes care of at this youth center. Not Mateus Hughes, the Mickey. I'm takes sorry, care I'm of sorry, him. Mickey. Right, and yeah. Mateus Hughes comes in, friggin' stabs Mickey with a knife. And next thing you know, this kid and his buddies are on vengeance out to get Mateus Hughes, too. But it just kind of like came out of nowhere where suddenly, oh, this little teeny little interview, that he, this, this questioning that Lorenzo Lamas did with this guy. Boom. Suddenly, that's all part of the storyline at the end of the movie. Well, I think that makes sense, though. Yeah. Which is, I, I, I thought know. it was. I, I think it added to the story. I'll be honest. Yeah, because 
without so, it, there'd be well, I I understand be very short, but. <laughs> I'll be honest with you. The the much more exciting part of the movie that I liked was they went to like a dojo and all yeah, these guys in cool, cool costume no stuff reason. were doing yeah. a lot of kung fu. That was great. I actually wanted more of that in the movie. You know? Yeah, more kung fu dojo guys. Yeah. That would have yeah. been great. I mean, they looked like they were like straight up like in their Mortal Kombat outfits. Yeah, and dude. Shit. Yeah. It was, <laughs> like, I looked great. I thought it was funny. I thought it was funny that Lorenzo Lama showed up and he's like uh does does the name like gecko or whatever the guy's name was gauss like what gauss gauss does the name gauss mean anything to you and one guy's like oh i'll go check with my master and then the master calls up the guy and he's just like hey yo this dude is here you know (laughs) what do you want us to do (laughs) because it was very stereotypical 80s 90s dojo of um you know yeah um stereotypes with uh but then the the master was just like hey guys yeah let's go one on dude i love like every single time that lorenzo lamas like has some kind of a quip in the movie and he does it a lot where like he's kind of gets his face and he's like oh oh, hey you guys got a lot of candles around here this place of like a fire code or something he just says stuff like that constantly and it's great because it's wicked hammy you know that's that's yeah, Lorenzo Lamas at about. his finest. <clears throat> so, oh, you know what else I liked in this movie? I don't remember what his name was, but the kid that Mickey from Pee Wee's Big Adventure was like, like the kid that you know that that Mickey he was you know, mentor, mentoring. He had a shotgun with a handle in the front, just like Duke Nukem like Duke 3D. Nukem. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. You know, it was the same shocker from Duke Nukem 3D. So that was great. Mm-hmm. That was great. Yeah, those kids kind of come out of nowhere. Come out of nowhere. Yeah. I mean, with the, with the shotgun and shit, because uh, they just like show... I forget. <clears throat> he's like fighting someone, right? And then these kids come up and have all these guns and shit. Yeah, so they thought that uh, Lorenzo Lamas might have killed Mickey. Right, you know? right, right. But he's like, no, no, man, you waste me. You won't get the guy who actually did it. So next thing you know, they're all working together. They got to team up. And then at the end. Teenagers. They don't really help him at all. No. At the end. So he gives the bounty money to the youth center that these kids now run. And he's like, you know what? I'm going to stay here in L.A. for a while. Now, they tend to do that in movies sometimes. And I'm thinking, wait a minute, dude. You got like an apartment or something on the other end of the country. Like. Yeah, but just maybe. I don't know. Do you think he kept the whole. He gave him the whole hundred thousand dollars. I don't know, dude. He, maybe oh. he maybe he got his uh, like his his brother's house. Yeah, that's true. I don't know. But hey, so here's my here's my theory, though. Yeah, because he gave those kids that house and the money. He's a bounty tracker. Yeah. If he's Ooh. pointing people to, uh, you know, have problems, problems solved yeah. oh. to uh, these new gangbangers. Yeah. Mm. Gang I think bangers. he's, you know, he's investing in his future. Yeah, that's a good Bounties theory. to track. Yeah, yeah. I like that. <clears throat> um, yep, my only other question was, uh, the dude who was in jail, who was getting out, that was, that hired Mateus Hughes and his goons, Mateus Hughes wanted a million dollars in uncut diamonds, right? Yeah. They're in a suitcase at the end of the movie, they're at a junkyard. He's Mateus Hughes puts them in a car, right? Mm. Boom. Bad guys are killed, whatever, right? Where'd the diamonds go? Did, did Lorenzo take them? Where'd the diamonds go? Did the million he even dollars? know about them? I don't he, think he, he probably knew didn't about even them. know about So they, they, they might just be still in this the car at the junkyard, right? Yeah, probably. It's going to get crushed. Yeah. Crazy. And then the diamonds aren't going to crush because they're the strongest yeah. mineral on earth or whatever. I don't know. They'll probably get crushed. Yeah, I'm yeah. sure you could crush a diamond with a car crusher. But uh, probably not even real diamonds. Oh. He might, was, I don't he was holding he had it up a to the moon. Thing, you know? Holding it, it up to the moon. It was like the middle of the night, though. <laughs> or like yeah, early morning. It was, it was fairly dark. Like. How are you going to know exactly it's real diamonds with that crappy it. little magnifying glass in like the in like, you know, a dawn lighting, like barely, 
barely any good light. You got to get one of those lamps that's got the big magnifying glass at the top. You bring it over and you take a look. <laughs> we have yeah, those special yeah, glasses yeah, yeah. where you go bloop, bloop. And yeah. there's like the two. I know what you're talking about. Well, you're sure. a diamond like connoisseur. Whoa. I just like looking at things really closely. <laughs> wow. <clears throat> um. Anyway. So, so anywho. Uh, yeah, that's kind of. What was your favorite fight? The dojo. Oh, yeah. Yeah, definitely yeah. the dojo okay. stuff. That was the okay. best. Good, good scene. Best scene in the movie. The hmm. one. The one in his hotel room was good, too. Oh, it always makes shootout? you think. Yeah. Yeah, that was good. <clears throat> and the lady comes in and he, like, kicks the door. It always makes you think, like, whoever's got the rooms next to the people <laughs> in movies, yeah. they're dead. They're just... <laughs> yeah, collateral damage. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we have, So, I like the very first scene. Because yeah. we, we glazed over it, but it's it says Boston. And I'm like, all right, Boston. And then Lorenzo Lamas walks through the door. It's like this black nightclub. And uh, Lorenzo Lamas is this nerdy white guy with the glasses. And he's got the really bad like English accent. He's like, yeah. Hello, I'm here to wet my whistle yeah, or whatever. And, and, and then uh, they're like, you're in the wrong place, mister. And um, Everyone's like giving him the eye like he doesn't belong there. And he goes in the bathroom and he uh, he has a uh, a flask full of smoke. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, <laughs> just a, a flask full of smoke. Yeah. Uh, you think it's he, like smoke flavoring or. <laughs> it, it's for uh, it's applewood flavor for his. Uh, <laughs> For when Dane smokes his mates. Yeah, yeah. Or when people are smoking baked goods on the British baking show that some people like to watch instead of movies like Bounty Tracker. Oh, I would. Yeah, I would pick British baking show over over uh, oh, Bounty Tracker. No, no way, man. No way. No, no way. way, Jose. But anyway, he he puts a, he's got a flask full of smoke, whatever whatever the fuck that means, and uh, he throws it in the trash, and then just smoke billows out of the out of the uh, uh, bathroom way more than a flask could hold. Uh, and he takes the fire extinguisher and pulls the alarm. He's like, ah, it's a fire! Uh, and then the only two people left are the bad guys that he's looking for. And then they, they fight and he kicks them and fucking they, he takes, you know, he does fucking, uh, uh, snake eater shit to him. Yeah. Uh, but he's dressed up as this nerd. It's pretty cool. Um, I like that fight the best. Yeah. All right. Yet another movie that takes place in Boston when nobody has an accent. Well, better mm. than them trying to do a poor accent. I would have preferred True. that. At least I it's mean, slightly authentic. In retrospect, I would I'd I would love to see Lorenzo Lamas try and do a Boston accent. <laughs> but hey, his fake English accent was pretty good. That was good. True. You know what's funny? I like the part where when he gets down into the nightclub and they're at the part where there's like the dance floor and he's kind of got like this this teeny little jig going. That was good. <laughs> yeah. That was good. Ah, that was uh, good stuff. That was good. Do you think Lorenzo Lamas has ever even been to Boston? No. Uh, probably not. I don't think so. You know, he, you know, if he had, Unless he probably he flies his helicopters there now. Well, I, I was going to say, he, yeah, yeah. Either that or he takes his motorcycle jet ski from like <laughs> Florida, wherever he lives and goes up to the North coast, you know, he drives it down the Charles. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, with the, uh, fucking canoe races they do there yeah. or whatever. <laughs> hey, more more likely he'd be probably, you know, take it down Lake Quinsig. Down <laughs> Lake Quinsig. I uh you know what this movie needed? Uh, granted, it's not a uh it's not a snake eater movie. I think this movie needed more like wacky shit like like a motorcycle jet ski in it. Yeah, I thought he was gonna <clears throat> do more like disguises and stuff because yeah. just mm -hmm. judging from the first uh scene. Yeah, well, but yeah, he doesn't I thought as a bounty do tracker any goofy disguises. Yeah, I, as a bounty tracker, you do stuff to try to get your to get your bounty, right? Yeah, lay off the but, ice. Yeah. 
he did bear mace. He didn't have a companion like he did in uh Yeah, there's no companion and there's no love interest yeah. or anything. No, know? this companion yeah. is the uh the like oh, the teenager, kid. the troubled kid. Yeah, yeah and the like, last but he doesn't come movie. he doesn't come into right. like the last quarter yeah, yeah, that's of the movie. True. And he doesn't really help in any way, no. shape, yeah. or form. So there's there's no true speedboat of this movie. Yeah, he doesn't fuck anybody or or anything. I he think must he not probably have, he must like, not have written the movie. <laughs> yeah. I would think he would fuck the um uh the female evil lady. Oh, the evil chick? Why yeah. would he, man? She's evil. And she's just well, trying to, to like shoot at him all the time. To infiltrate like James Bond does that shit all the time. Like, you know, to get closer to Mateus Hughes or that she would seduce him, you know, one ah, way or the other. Or Lorenzo true, Lomas tries true. to fuck Mateus Hughes. I gotcha. <laughs> you know what's funny? Hey, speaking of Mateus Hughes, it always cracks me up in these movies. And, and Mateus Hughes was a big culprit of this. Whenever he's got like his cell phone, right? And he's like early cell phones, right? He's like, yes, yes, I like that. Okay. And it's like, you know, it's like, it's like weird like generic banter that he says, yeah. obviously there's nobody on the other line, you know, when he's acting, doing stuff, but he just goes like, yes, yes. I like that. Yes. Okay. You know what? It's just, <laughs> it's just weird. You know, nobody talks like that on the phone, you know? <clears throat> well, that's why in movies, nobody ever says goodbye. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Nobody does. Yeah. They just you finish know? their sentence and hang up. I start doing that. Well, yeah. that's kind of rude in real life. <laughs> Well, not if you're a bad guy, Mateus Hughes. Whoa, are to, you a bad guy? Am are you I trying a bad to get guy? a million dollars in uncut diamonds? Un, un, uncut dick diamonds? For s- some reason that I don't really know why it's happening? No. 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 Because of business guy? But, oh, yeah. Because it's, not, it's nothing personal. It's just business. <laughs> I, uh, yeah. yeah. So my take on that is I have no idea why... Uh, why they, I guess Kevbot heard that line saying why they're going after the, why they're even getting these diamonds and shit. Because they stole some floppy disks or whatever. Yeah, it, I don't know. Yeah, it had to do with and some evidence like a, for the trial for some dude. I don't I guess. I didn't get that. I just know they look, they wanted uncut diamonds wholesale. She yeah, mentioned that Yeah, that doesn't make any sense. Like why wholesale? Because it's like, because money's traceable, but diamonds are not. It's yeah, like, yeah. But then yes. you got to go to a wholesaler. Like I don't know. Then you gotta, then you gotta sell the diamonds. Well, I you think can't if go you're... to the pawn shop because then they're gonna. Yeah, where are you gonna sell diamond? these diamonds? I would think that if you're a bad guy like Mateus Hughes, you, you probably, you know, have your resources. You got a line. Yeah, yeah, it's gonna. I think it's gonna take a while to turn those diamonds back into money. You're like, hey, I got a shitload of diamonds. You want one? Maybe you hold on to the diamonds and they're worth one point two million. Yeah, yeah, but maybe you buy some Dogecoin with them. Yeah. <clears throat> get some, get some NFTs. <laughs> I'm sure. He's, yeah, the, some Mateus nice Hughes got a million dollars worth discs. of diamonds in 1990 and said, "Hey, I'm gonna wait until someone creates a <laughs> an authenticator digital code so that I can trade these diamonds in for." For Photoshop images that are the original <laughs> ones in, yes. in 30 and years from now. somebody better not yeah. screenshot them. Yeah. <laughs> oh, boy. Boy, that's, uh, I think that's just about it, huh? So what do you guys want to rate the it. bounty tracker out of? Out of 10 uh, uncut kicks diamonds? to the face. Kicks I don't know. Oh, there is something I want to say when there yeah. the tape. I don't know if it was the tape or it's the way the movie was, but there was like a lot of slow motion that yeah, seemed out of place. It's, I it's yeah, towards the, the, end, the tape being flushed up towards the end. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tape was but it kind of worked. It kind of yeah. worked because like it happened in like the fight scenes and like it made it look I think like there it was, was even cool. Yeah, I think there was even specifically one scene where. Mateus Hughes gets kicked in the face yeah. by Lorenzo Lamas, and yeah, it's yeah, supposed yeah. to be slow mo or something. It just know. looked like you know it was like foot, and it's like, ooh. <laughs> well, that's the one that I was going to say. Like that shot actually doesn't look like it was supposed to be slow motion because it was clearly 
like shot in real time and then should have been sped up to sell the kick. You know oh, what I mean? Yeah. But uh, then the movie well, it put definitely... it in slow motion and it looks way faker than <laughs> it should. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe it was intentional. Maybe not. I don't know. Who knows? Um, but there is, during that fight, um, Mateus Hughes, I forget what he says, but he's like, I'm going to get you, Lorenzo Lamas. <laughs> yeah, well, he, he's like, uh, he, he says something something like, uh, like uh, I'm going to hit you, Bounty Tracker. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then he goes, <laughs> and then he gets kicked in the face and his head gets uh Skewered by bolts, bolts sticking out of an RV or something. Yeah, what a weird way to kill the main villain. Yeah. Like it, like the bolts were like, only like a couple of inches. I don't think he would even die. He'd probably get hurt a lot. You, you know what I think yeah. would have been maybe a, suffer some some hearing loss if it went into his ear. Yeah, I think it would have been great if they had ended this movie where there was something that was like like a bomb or something that was going to explode. Yeah, and he put in like Lorenzo put like the diamonds on it, and the diamonds came out like shrapnel, and and got and got Mateus Hughes, you know, yeah, with the, with the diamond awesome. shrapnel. That would have been cool. That's more of a snake eater thing. Yeah, I know. He but. turns diamonds into a bomb. Yeah, some way where he could get like one last pun in, like if there's like a heat seeking missile or something coming at him yeah. and he sticks the target or whatever onto Mateus Hughes and he goes, looks like you're the one being tracked Ooh. and then he blows up or something. Wait, he is the one being tracked though. Well, no, here's I my know, question. <laughs> there'd be like, <laughs> there'd no. be, yeah, I'm, I, I see some sort of shit. I see where you're going to with it. it. I have to imagine that Mateus Hughes was was a wanted man, right? Of course, yeah, so, hundred thousand dollars, right? So they got the bounty on him. Do you think it was dead or alive? He did say dead or alive. Oh, he did. Oh, yeah, okay. Mateus Hughes is like, how much is my life worth? And he says, hundred thousand dollars, dead or alive, and I'm gonna make you dead. <laughs> so uh, that one, yeah, uh, yeah, cool. Maybe he could have thrown him in a car crusher or something. Well, no, then he'd destroy the body. Huh. And there was already a crushed car yeah, in a car gotta, crusher. You got to so, yeah. the, right. uh, the music was really good in this, too. I think it was very Python Force. Uh, oh, at yeah. At least in the beginning. In the, yep. Yeah. Big time. It definitely had that. I mean, like all the music in all these movies back then sounded the same. Like they were yeah. all done by like but one guy on a keyboard. But yeah, it's good stuff. And, uh, good and stuff. Re- guitar in reverse. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's good. <laughs> That's what it sounds like. <laughs> nothing See, though. So a, a nothing beats a nothing beats the sound the the music in um what was that other Lorenzo Lamas movie that we watched? That takes oh, place. Oh man, in, I know what you is it's not uh, Gladiator Cop, is it? Code um Oh, oh, uh, Code name CIA, CIA, Code Name oh, wait, Alexa, no, that's or something like that. Right? That movie had the best music. <laughs> the best music. And wasn't there a Mateus Hughes movie where he does set off like a heat seeking missile uh, didn't we watch don't that remember i think there was he's like it i might be thinking I of know. theodore rex i don't know i don't know dude <laughs> i mean i wouldn't but, be surprised uh, if there was i'm pretty you know? sure we watched a Mateus hughes movie <laughs> where there's a heat seeking missile <laughs> probably it might have been uh, just bandits it, I mean, I there's so many possibilities. This is probably a movie that we watched <clears throat> off the cuff that was not, um, that we have not covered on the I show. I swear right? it was for the show. Well, I don't know. It, I, well, it might have been that one uh, where. Uh, he wasn't in Future Kick, right? No. That might be it. Is that no, it? No, no, he wasn't in that one. He I mean, it I might be Mateus Hughes. I, got, I, I don't think know. this All is right. our first time watching a Mateus Hughes movie on this show. No, because yeah. he's in um, he's in that alien movie, isn't he? In a uh, Dark Angels. Ah, uh, oh, you're right. Yeah, 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 yeah. I forgot we talked about that. Damn, that movie's so good. Yeah, man. Ah, oh, that was a while that. ago. Though. That was a while ago. That's a Christmas it? movie. Yeah. Uh, it's also called. I mean, Dark Angels, like the secondary title oh i come or, in peace the, yeah i come in peace. oh i come in peace you leave in peace oh with the cds yep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah with the cds with the cds yep. 
Oh, shit. <laughs> All right. Well, what are we rating this out? What are we rating out this out of? What are we rating this out of? Out of how many uh, Duke Nukem 3D shotguns? Ooh, I like that. Ooh, you want to do that? All right. <laughs> Damn. Yeah. All right. All right. Who's going first? Kev, uh, why don't you just get it? Rip it off like a bin. <laughs> six out of ten. Whoa. That's not bad. Not bad for you. That's not bad. Yeah. I like That's the Renzo Llamas good. movies. Oh, but you'd you rather watch. I was really going to hate you, this. Hey, what would you? Well, because you'd rather watch the British Baking Show. What would you rate the <laughs> British Baking Competition episode that you watched with your wife instead of this movie? Out of ten, Duke Nukem shotguns. <laughs> Probably a seven. I'm spending quality time with my wife, and we enjoy watching things together. I'm not going to. Make her suffer through uh, a no, movie she saying, doesn't want can I to tell watch. You something, I'm not Kev? saying that. I'm just saying just the movie itself, like that. The uh, circumstances, you know, not considered. Just the just the movies. It would it still get a seven? The British Baking Show. That oh, one yeah. episode. Well, that it's going to be higher. So yeah. Okay. <laughs> I got to tell you something. I, I, would, I would more willingly sit down and watch um, the Great British Baking Show than I would. Um, bounty tracker. Oh man, what if Matthias <laughs> Hughes came in there into the competition and just started oozing people? <laughs> uh, I think that I think would you're be adding awesome. to the show. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that would be at least an an eight. I'd say that'd be good. Just no, shooting was, up all the cupcakes. It was <laughs> good. It's definitely no snake eater, but oh no, but it was still it's gonna good. track that track the bounty. Which is, Booty the, tracker. which is like a pie. So, but yay, yeah, let me tell you something. Okay. Kev, let me tell you something about relationships. Sometimes in a relationship, strange relationships. Sometimes, in, sometimes in in <laughs> relationships, <laughs> you gotta do things that you might not necessarily like, but you do because it makes your significant other happy, right? You know how many times I've had to watch some shitty chick flick or something like that that I don't want to watch, but. <laughs> I've, I've had to sit and watch How many watch times it. has your wife had to watch a Mateus Hughes movie? <laughs> yeah. How many, Kev? How many, how many times has your wife or your significant other has uh, made you sit down and watch Terror Tunes or Dwarf? <laughs> I watched uh, uh, Thunder in Paradise with Kamar and she loved it. All right. Thunder in Paradise is great. But yeah. I mean, who wouldn't love hey, Thunder in Paradise? Speaking of terror tunes. Brother. Speaking of terror <laughs> tunes. For those who follow yes. us on the Instagram. So I got an email like two nights ago. I was just leaving work and I got an email from YouTube that said, oh, one of your videos has been <clears throat> removed for a copyright infringement. And I'm like, what the hell is this? Well, lo and behold... The producer of not Terror Tunes, which we went over, but of Terror Tunes 2, 3, and potentially the upcoming 4, has decided to take down our review of Terror Tunes 1 off of YouTube. <laughs> which a isn't copyright a copyright thing. thing. That doesn't make sense no, at all. No, it's, 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 so this, 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 I think his name is Steven Escobar, that clown. He decided that uh, that terror tune. He probably listened to our review, liked yours, T man, but did not like did not like (laughs) ours, and said, "Oh, I love terror tunes. I'm gonna take down this podcast." (laughs) And that's what he did. He hit the little flag (laughs) button. That's what he sounds. That's exactly, dude. If you see a picture of this mofo, that's exactly what he sounds like. Okay. That's exactly what this guy sounds like. He's like, ah, oh, I'm the producer my. of Terror Tunes. <laughs> if he I, does sound like that, I want to meet him. Yeah, good. I, I hope he's in a movie. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Anywho, so he's a dink. He can he can go uh, <laughs> he can go screw. And uh, I, what do you, what do you guys, the masses who are who are our fans, should we should we? What do you guys think we should do about this predicament here? Well, I think you just go to YouTube and say, hey, it's not a copyright thing it's just a review and then can you dispute his dispute yeah they probably i don't know youtube will probably still fuck us probably well you know what i'm gonna do i'm gonna go on to uh steven escobar's youtube channel and i'm gonna fucking flag every single one of his videos and have all of them taken down (laughs) motherfucker it's not that serious (laughs) retaliation 
<laughs> I'm gonna. Well, he's gonna, bringing out the terror that's from right. Dangerine. That's right. How, how, how many Duke Dukem shotguns would you give this? <laughs> I'm going to rip off your head and shit down your neck. <clears throat> That's not a threat to anybody, especially Steven Escobar. I'm just saying. Especially. He's just quoting. <laughs> I'm just quoting. Duke uh, Duke now Duke. this one's going to get taken down. Yeah, exactly. The FBI ah, is going to rage. I didn't like what he said about me on his episode. I'm hitting the flag button. You sound like a, a He-Man character. <laughs> he you sound me. like Barf. <laughs> I heard that. I put them in my uh, burgers. <laughs> uh, okay. What out of how many out of 10? <laughs> Pump action front handle. Duke Duke of 3D shotguns. Am I going to give Bounty Tracker? I'm going to give it 8 out of 10. Mm. Yeah. Because, again, I was expecting a, a bit more creativity in the storyline. And by the way, the storyline, I had a hard time understanding. <laughs> we all did. But other than that, hey, Lorenzo Lamas and Mateus Hughes together in a movie. Because I got this movie because I saw that cover and I saw those two yeah, on the cover. Yeah. If I saw some in the video store, you're darn right I'm gonna rent it on a Friday night. Absolutely, oh, yeah. you bet your you bet your Rudy too. I would. So that's that. That is that. All right, there, T man. What's it gonna be? Ooh, I'm gonna split the difference and give it seven. Ah, uh, Duke Nukem shotgun wow. with the handles. Wow. Uh, wow. I mean, it was good. I liked, but like you said, I expected more, especially out of that first scene. I was like, wow. Like yeah. I was, it was a 10 right off the bat, but then it just kind of got picked away at. Um, Cause I wanted more goofiness, more like, I thought he was going to be in like costumes and shit. And yeah. Like doing yeah. things. That would have been great. But it was more like CSI, like you know, interrogating people and she, like he goes to a bar and asks questions. He goes to a dojo, kicks some ass and asks questions. He goes yeah. to the ice cream man and asks questions or whatever the fuck. Yeah. Um, and I didn't know what the fucking plot was. Um, yep. but there is a scene where in, uh, John would appreciate this, uh, where the, uh, Mateus Hughes like drives his Ford Bronco to the, the compound of, uh, I don't know. It's just like an RV in the desert, and yeah. like the the chick is like typing away on a computer, and I how she has an internet connection, I have no idea. <laughs> but then she's just like, "All right, it took a while, but I accessed the mainframe." <laughs> in any movie where you access the mainframe, <laughs> because I guarantee you, because it took a while, no writer knows what that means. <laughs> <laughs> but it's in so many movies, and I gotta give it points for for accessing the mainframe. Yeah. I don't know. That was fun. Um, so there's a lot of like cool stuff like that and just like 90s generic stuff. The fights yeah. were awesome, but the story yeah. was just kind of lacking. I'm going to pitch a movie to you guys Ooh, based on do. the opening of this movie. Instead of Lorenzo Lamas as a bounty tracker, what if he's, uh, you know, a one of those two tracker? A what? A witch board two tracker? <laughs> no, no, not a witchboard uh, too. What if he's? Uh, is awesome. he is he an Amityville, the Next Generation tracker? <laughs> I I don't know exactly what it is, but they're the people who hand out court summonses. So they're like the people who kind of they might catch you off guard and be like, yeah, yeah. What if he did that? Like so you he just won the uh, one of these giant fucking checks. Just kidding, yeah. you're going to court. Please sign here. Just kidding, you got served. Yeah. So it's Lorenzo Lamas, he's just like a, and craftily uh, <laughs> handing out court summonses. He's got to wear all these costumes and all this stuff. He's just like a legal clerk or something. Something, yeah. I, I don't know what the position a, is called. That's a great he, idea for a movie, actually. And then he gets in. Maybe it's maybe it's like part that and part like you take it from. Um, <laughs> Take some of the story from Bushwhacked, where it's like, mm. but he catches some, uh, some nefarious s- criminal scouts. activities going down. So people think he's be, you know, he's in, he's responsible for something, but really he was just um, delivering a court summons. It's like, like master's papers meets yeah. Bushwhack 
Meets bounty tracker. Meets bounty tracker. So I he's got that idea. He's got to get all the evidence by using his uh, um, disguises <laughs> to prove his innocence. Get me num nums. <laughs> You're served. I like it. And That's an awesome idea. Go. What's it called? Dun, Summons dun, dun. served. <laughs> Is it a comedy uh, or an action movie? I think or it's an action movie. comedy. Okay, okay. Yeah, I don't know what it'd be called. Served on a silver platter. Justice served. Ooh, that's great, actually. Yeah. That's a great uh You know what? On the title. back, on the back and of the box. Then the sequel takes place in Antarctica <laughs> and it's justice served cold. <laughs> <laughs> on the back of the box, they need to have a shot of the giant check with him. Kicking it right in the middle, and it's like splitting it down the middle. Yeah, like his legs coming right through yeah, the middle, and, like, and it knocks the guy out. Yeah, he has to do karate to serve people these papers for some yeah, reason. Yeah, yeah. In the in the third one, he has to deliver some uh, papers to Eddie Murphy in the eighties. So it's just as served raw. Ooh, <laughs> Ooh that's good because uh. Eddie Murphy has a special called Eddie Murphy Raw. Yeah, I'm explaining yeah. that in case you don't know. Jokes are always funnier when you have to explain them. Isn't that right? That's well, how it if, goes. If you explain the funny part, sure. Of course. Of course. <laughs> you have to explain the explain only the the uh, premise, the lead in. Mm, indeed. Uh, indeed. You guys have anything else? Uh, I want to say thanks to on? our Patreone. Yes. <clears throat> Kyle Shute, Corey Gorski, Thomas Andrew Gwynn, Captain James T. Kaiser of the Good Ship, Kick Barbecue Your Leg boat. Through a Giant Check Boat, uh, Bert Sazerac, our official uh, dweeb from Harvard fluffer, Trivia with Buds, the podcast available now. And Soda Poppin' Daddies, the professional pro. James, Kevin James, our light wrangler. Lex T, our official mask man. And Tiff, our official Tiff, who is at a haunted house right now. <clears throat> yep. <laughs> Lights out, haunted right. house. Lights out. Right. Cool. I hope you had fun, Tiff, at the haunted house, because I would love to go there myself. Mm-hmm. All right. Wow! Any, you guys have any uh, anything else you want to say about Bounty Tracker? It's nope. a Bounty Track. It sounds like a a a, a very uh, like uh, expensive paper towel. <laughs> what? <laughs> the the quicker, Bounty Tracker, quicker picker upper <laughs> Bounty Tracker. <laughs> yeah, it like follows the spill for you. When, like you put when it you've down. got a spill. Put it in its place. <laughs> Bounty track. When, yeah, when, <laughs> when only one, when each. only, when someone has to absorb <laughs> only one, only one toilet can collect. Are we only one? One toilet. One paper towel can collect. <laughs> Poopy tracker. <laughs> hey, this toilet collects. Didn't we watch another movie? No, oh, About I'm thinking of it. Uh, that, I don't know if we've talked about it on the show or not. I forgot, but uh, I got a movie here. with Don the Dragon Wilson called Cyber Tracker. Oh, I thought we did watch Cyber Tracker. Maybe that's the one with the giant did, missile. Did we do Cyber Tracker? Because I know we no, did Cyber. Uh, something. Or, or am I thinking of Future Future Shock? Future, future Force, Justice? Future Justice? Whatever you know. Is it Future Justice? Future Kick? Future Kick. You know, or I'm thinking cyber? of Future Kick. I don't know so if we did know. Cyber Tracker. I don't know. Uh, I, we've done cyber something for sure. Did we? I don't know. I think so. Maybe. I think so. Uh, oh, well. well, that's uh, that's I think that uh, wrap it up. Bounty tracker. The Bounty quicker tracker. kicker upper. Huh? How about that? That's pretty good. How about that? How about that? Bounty, you, get, you can have that one for free. <laughs> Unless you actually do it, then pay me. A hundred million dollars in uncut diamonds. Ooh. Wholesale. <laughs> All right. Why don't you take us out there, Kev? All right. Thanks, everybody, again for listening to this episode of VH. VHS. <laughs> What's man? the this? last letter? Whoa. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> what show are we doing? I don't even know. 
Uh, thank you again for listening. I'm the Kevbot. This is the Train. This is Topher Hansen. As always, be kind and rewind.